Let's do this. <laughs> oh, my eyes are changed. Okay. I released my first album when I was 16. Uh, it was called Winter. Um, it was 2018 when I released it. Um, and I feel like for what it is and for where I was at at that time, it was a solid project, but at the same time, it left so much to be desired. I was inspired by a lot of very experimental artists. I was listening to a lot of Bjork and Image and Heap, and I tried my very hardest to be just like them. And I feel like in a lot of ways that showed. It's still definitely me for sure on that project, but I feel like I've come such a long way since then. And I feel like with this project, I wanted to show that. Back then, I did everything on that project by myself. I produced the whole thing. I wrote all the lyrics and all the music. I performed and programmed everything by myself, even down to the cover art I designed myself. And I'm very proud that I was able to accomplish that at 16. But like I said, that project left so much to be desired and I wanted to change that for this project. Since then, I've discovered so many other artists that have uh, influenced me as a person and as a musician. And I wanted to show that in this project by making it in the same vein as Winter, but not necessarily the same by any means. My lyrics weren't linear at all in Winter. Um, I tried to use so many metaphors, and I think some of them were successful and other times they weren't. And so with this project, I wanted to be very straightforward with everything, and I use metaphors occasionally, but they aren't the main focus. My main intent for Ombre is to basically share where I'm at now and share my experiences in the past couple of months, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic and how that's affected me personally. I started it in late February, early March, um, when I recorded Silhouette for the first time and I didn't think I was going to have that as part of the project. I was already working on another album since I released Winter but I scrapped it because I wasn't happy with where it was going and I felt like I needed to do some more growth. I'm calling this project Ombre because uh, one of the definitions of the word is a pattern that goes from a lighter shade of a color to a darker shade of a color and I feel like that's a really, really, really good representation of how this project progresses. It starts out very self-reassured and then as it goes it continually gets darker and darker and darker and more depressing until you finally just get to the point of like, leave me alone, I don't want to talk to you, please go go somewhere else, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I feel like it really reflects my mental state during this entire pandemic. I was out of state when it first hit the United States. I was out for my spring break trip, I was in Panama City Beach visiting some family. Um, not your usual spring break activities, especially not for a senior in high school. And I came home a day early because one by one things were starting to shut down and I felt like I was putting my family in danger and my friends in danger and myself in danger. My original thought process was, okay, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to just do what the government says. I'm not going to go out in public. Uh, I'm not going to do anything like that for three or four weeks and hopefully this entire thing will blow over. And that didn't happen at all. <laughs> People were still going out, they weren't following the CDC's guidelines, and uh, about three months after is when this is going to be released. It's still ongoing. It's getting a little better. The curve is flattening just a little bit, but it's still pretty bad. I haven't really been able to see very many of my friends. I feel like not having that physical bond has really affected my mental health for the worst, especially with somebody who has lived with anxiety and depression and all that for uh, the past few years. It just hasn't been good at all. And I feel like this project encompasses that, uh, especially when you consider the progression of the project and the different themes that are explored. Not Looking For Love was actually the last song that was recorded and produced and written for this project. I knew I wanted to start out with a little bit more of an upbeat song, but I didn't really know what it was going to look like. Um, over the past couple of years, I have been in a few relationships and I looked to those for fulfillment and self-reassurance and I just didn't find it. I don't know if it was a lack of commitment from myself or just a lack of mental preparation in general, but I found that 
a relationship wasn't what I needed and it's still not what I need. And I'm sure that'll change in the future, but right now it's just not in the cards for what I'm trying to do with my life. This song lyrically is basically just me saying, okay, relationships are cool, it was fun for a little bit, and then it just totally drained me. So I'm good on my own, I'm self-sufficient. I have other things that I need to put my energy towards in my life, especially like I said, as somebody who is about to start college, that's going to be a really big thing that I need to put all of my energy into. And I just don't have the time or the commitment needed for a relationship right now. And I'm sure eventually that'll change in the future, but right now it's just not in the cards. This song is very different from what I've done in the past. I've never really done like a super upbeat song before. The entire time I was creating it, I was trying to kind of envision what it would be like performing this song in a live setting, which of course ain't gonna happen right now because we're in the middle of the pandemic, but eventually in the future, I'd love to be able to perform uh, all of these songs. And so I would be in my room, I'd be producing this song, and I'd just kind of go around and I'd be going around with like my hands in the air and just kind of like pretending like I'm moshing by myself. It was super awkward. <laughs> But I feel like um, envisioning that kind of atmosphere really helped shape the song. It contains a sample at the end of one of my favorite classical pieces. It's Adagio, Adiago, I don't know how to pronounce it. Adagio in G minor or something like that. Um, but I love it so much. Um, I'm a sucker for classical music and I've always wanted to incorporate something like that into my music. And so I'm like, this would be a great thing to put in there, especially at the end where it's kind of transitioning into the next track. And I kind of had this idea of putting it over like some vinyl static to give it kind of like that old timey feel. And it kind of translates into the next song, which starts out with static and like these little like very high frequency concentrated drums. I really love that transition. I'm super proud of it. And I'm just proud of this song in general. Like I said earlier, Silhouette was the very first song that I recorded for this project without knowing it. I was very inspired by the musician Her. I love her music so much. She explores a lot of themes like infidelity in her music and she also incorporates a lot of very interesting things musically, like all sorts of like modulations and tempo changes and stuff like that. And I'm a nerd, so I'm a sucker for that sort of thing. And so I'm like, hey, what if I made a song kind of like in the vein of her and like imagine like giving it to her to sing. So I created this song in the vein of one of my idols and I was so proud of it. I'm still so proud of it. I can't believe that I made it. But a month later, I presented it to my therapist who listened to it and he said, Noah, I don't know if you realize this, but I think this song may be rooted in your fear of abandonment and your fear of being betrayed by somebody. And that was just kind of like a light bulb moment. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't think about it that way. So this song was actually a lot more soul bearing than I thought it was originally. I still don't know how I did that, but, <laughs> but yeah, I'm super proud of the song and how it turned out. And I'm glad that people responded to it the way that they did. Yeah, it was really cool to create. Pressure was a song that I actually wrote about a year ago. I used to work for Rue 21. It's such a cool story. I love the atmosphere. About two or three weeks in to my employment there, we got some new managers. And one of them, they were nice at first, and they um, eventually like kind of showed their true colors over time. And they pulled me aside one day uh, I was kind of having an off day. They're like, hey, so I'm going to send you home early because I noticed that over the past few weeks, you seem to be disrespectful and have been giving me mean looks. And all I could do was just sit in silence because anybody who knows me personally knows that I would never intentionally disrespect anybody or give anybody nasty looks unless I had a reason to. I had no reason to do this to her. She had never done anything to me. I'd never said anything to her. And so I went home early from work that day and I just laid in my bed and I cried. 
and I was just thinking about what it was that I did wrong. And so I wrote this song and I kind of set it aside because I recorded a demo and I'm like, okay, this is cool, but I don't think this is the right time to put it out right now. And so it kind of just sat on my hard drive for a little bit. And earlier this year, I was introduced to somebody by a mutual friend. His name is Logan, but he releases music under the name 13. And he's a super cool dude. He's super talented. He also produces all of his stuff on his own. And I'm super proud to say that I had the chance to work with him. I sent him the song and I'm like, hey, I'm looking for somebody to collaborate with and I really want you to be on this song. He sent back a verse to me the next morning and I edited it into the original song and I sent it to him while I was still like reworking the song and he's like oh my gosh that was wow <laughs> and I'm so proud of what we did together and I'm very proud that he was a part of it this song is one that I have such a hard time listening to whenever I'm listening through the whole project and the reason why is because the vocal mixing was so bad <laughs> I got a vocal processor from a friend a little while back and I was trying to set it up to where I could have my vocals EQ'd on there and that didn't work out at all because my headphones are not flat in terms of how they're EQ'd and so I had no low level on my voice. It came out very tinny and very weird and not to mention all the vocal takes, it sounded like it was done as part of like an ASMR video. It was just so bad but I couldn't do another take for a third time and so i'm just like screw it i'm gonna leave it in here it's fine the way it is hopefully nobody's gonna notice <laughs> which of course now that i pointed it out people are probably gonna go back and listen to it and be like oh yeah that's awful but yeah that was kind of the origin story behind that song um hey there guys it's uh two boy 13. we did this maybe i think uh two or three months back he came to me and he was like hey uh, i heard that he you do music, uh, you produce beats sometimes, you know. And it was pretty weird. I don't normally get a lot of people who are sitting there, you know, texting me, asking to collab and things. We ended up uh, talking back and forth, spitballing ideas, and he sent me the, uh, the demo to uh, the song, his original mix. And the first time I heard the beat, I was just sitting there in awe. I was like, you yeah, know, wow, this is, this is some pretty <laughs> solid stuff. All I could think was, was I need to I need to actually put some some work into this, which you know for most things you do that for, unless you're just screwing around making a stupid song, whatever. Basically, I was following the uh, the line of it, um, which he had already established is this uh, this song that was really you know, delving into the idea of what pressure really feels like. He really displayed perfect amount of emotion into the song. Yeah, I, I pretty much followed that same line of thought, thinking, you know, what it feels like when you feel like you're being so beaten down by the world and everything around you, you know? And uh, I, you know, thought about a lot of my own experiences when it comes to pressure, you know, when it comes to uh, expectancies of uh, what you should be like, what you should do, uh, things you should accomplish, things that uh, you should be interested in. And so I, I implemented that heavily. What he brought to the table was something I definitely could pick up. And it was a four bar, eight bar section uh, where the beat kind of dropped down and it was definitely, you could tell, more of a, a hip hop beat at that point. And I made sure to lay down some pretty uh, hard hitting vocals and even, you know, had to add in a little more, you know, voice, a little more tone into it to be able to, you know, portray just how much it's like you gotta scream. Uh, that's how much pressure you're under. You just feel like screaming at the world. I've been through a lot of that same stuff. So actually the track, it, uh, it applies to me heavily and I really enjoy listening to it. You know, I gotta say, I got much love for you, man. You're an amazing producer, amazing songwriter, amazing singer. Uh, I wish I had a voice like yours and didn't have to use all the effects that I do. But yeah, no, hats off to you, man. Uh, Wanna Go Home was one that was kind of tough to record. I wrote it based on certain situations in my personal life and that song was written with the intention of leaving it up to the interpretation of the listener. It uses a lot of sound effects. I incorporated Foley into it for the first time, which was really fun. I literally took my iPhone and I went around and I recorded like shoes hitting the floor. I patted my hands on my carpet and used those as kind of like soft footsteps. It was really cool. It was fun. 
It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty great. Sound design was a very big focus for this entire project, honestly. Um, that was inspired by a friend that I was speaking to while I was creating this whole project. Uh, his name is Tony Mintz. He's a small YouTuber. He's a social media personality. He's hilarious. He's a fun guy to talk to. I'm super grateful for him. Sound design became a very big thing, especially for this song where the only main instruments are the piano and my voice. Just a singular voice track. I didn't want anything else in there. And so there are all sorts of like sound effects and um, all sorts of things in there to kind of create the atmosphere for this song. It has a lot of metaphors in there that I put in there on purpose to um, purposefully confuse people. I wanted to make it as personal and soul bearing as I could without outright saying what the song was about and so this song is completely up to the interpretation of whoever wants to listen to it originally the song is going to be a lo-fi sort of track in the same vein as silhouette and then i started recording it and i'm like okay this is too complicated for what the song is talking about and so i stripped it back um i played all the chords on piano just singular like little diamonds on the piano as a lot of people will call it and i sang very soft as soft as i could that's basically how the song is created there wasn't really much into it other than it was made for my own personal closure and the lyrical themes are up to the interpretation of the listener Leave Me Alone was so much fun to make. I'm so proud of how that song turned out. I remember the night that I first made this song. I was taking a shower like super late at night. I think it was like 11.30 or something like that. 11.15, 11.30. And my phone would not stop blowing up from people I did not want to talk to. <laughs> I've never been one to meet my phone because I don't want to be in a situation where somebody's trying to get a hold of me in an emergency situation and I wasn't there to help them. And so my phone was just constantly going off while I was in the shower. And all I could think the entire time was just, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. And that hook just kind of popped into my head while I was in the shower. I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, this needs to be a song. And so I hurried up, I got out of the shower and then I went immediately to my room uh, to all of my recording equipment and I produced the song as I wrote it and it was really fun. The song is very minimalistic in production. The only instruments in there are the drums, an oscillator, the little mallet thingies that are kind of interspersed throughout the whole thing, and a little sub bass for good measure. And that was it. The song took like 30 minutes to make and then I spent like an extra two or three weeks kind of working out all the effects and the sound design for this song. I recorded this song in about 30 minutes. I started it around 11.30 and I finished it I think around 12.05 and that was when I started sending it to people and I sent it to Tony. He messaged me back, I think it was like one or two in the morning. And he's like, oh my gosh, where has this been? <laughs> and that was when he first brought out the idea of turning this whole project into like a sound design sort of thing. And that was where I started playing with like panning the drums around and panning the mallets and all that sort of stuff. The response to the song has been amazing and I'm very grateful for it. It's been an amazing thing to create this entire project and I'm very thankful that I have the opportunity to be able to express myself through music, regardless of the theme. <laughs> Okay, so no one wanted me to talk about Leave Me Alone, which is fantastic. If you don't know me, by the way, hi, my name is Tony Mintz. A couple months back, Noah sent me this, like, demo that was, like, something that he, like, threw together in an hour. I don't know how he did it, but he threw this thing together at me and went, here, listen to this. And I had heard a few of his songs beforehand. I'm like, okay, yeah, these sound kind of cool, you know. Happy piano about it. They sound pretty. That song, in particular, hit, and it was so actually good like i was stunned by it it reminded me of like banks because it had this like echoing sound which i love so much and i listened to it i was just i was just shook I, oh my god it was so good i afterwards said 
I gotta send this to my friend Georgie because she's a very good friend of mine and basically it's also Noah's like mother. <laughs> so I sent it off to my friend Georgie. She had the exact same reaction. She was just stunned and I was so confused and I loved it. I just said, you have to make this song on your EP. This, this has to be like your feature song because it is so absolutely incredibly good. I loved it so much. So yeah, that was the story. Now it's published and I gotta be a co-writer on it because he gave me accreditation for helping him so much. So thank you so much, dude. So. Hey, my name is Georgie Grimm and my friend Noah asked me to talk about his latest song on his newest EP called Leave Me Alone. I first off really liked this song. I thought it was so different than any music that I've ever heard in my entire life. And I've listened to a lot of music. His music has this kind of like ethereal feeling. Like when you listen, you kind of feel like you're going into a different dimension. I have synesthesia, which means that I can hear colors and that sounds weird, but like when I hear songs and I hear sounds or words or music or any type of like noise, it has a color that I associate with it. And when I heard this song, it felt very like blue and green, but like aquamarine and like very like purple too, like very deep and purple. It just, it felt very like echoey like it felt like there were multiple layers to the song and you can tell that noah really took the time to um you know really edit and make the song as good as it possibly could be i love the use of um instrumentals and the sound of his voice is just, it's so beautiful. And I think that there's just, there's so much potential with this song, with the album. And I know that this album is just gonna be absolutely amazing. Um, just from seeing the first song overall, I think he's got something unique about him. Noah, you're an incredible artist and I cannot wait to work with you in the future. And I truly hope that your EP gets a lot of hits because it's amazing and you deserve so much attention on this. I think you're incredible and I seriously cannot wait to see where you go with your life and what you do in your career. So good job and congratulations. Wow, I'm sorry, I was like gonna be like, I don't know what the f to say right now. I'm such a crackhead. If you want, you can edit that part out, Noah, because that was weird. Go listen to Leave Me Alone and the rest of his EP because it is just amazing. The cover art was designed by somebody that I used to go to school with. Uh, his name is Trevor Hembry. He's a really cool dude. He's super talented. I wanted to collaborate with somebody on the cover art. That was something that I tried to do originally for winter and I fell out of contact with the person that I was doing the cover art with and their idea was scrapped, which is a shame because it was absolutely amazing. And so I presented it to him. I'm like, I don't want this to be super complicated. I want it to be very atmospheric and very woozy, kind of like the entire project is. I already had a general color scheme in mind of like these really deep blues and greens, kind of like a sea green sort of thing. Originally it was going to be me a self-portrait of me against like this background of like these blues and greens and it went on and he kept sending me the um his drafts for it i'm like okay this isn't working and so i eventually sent him some cover art ideas from some of my favorite artists where they were just using like these simple intricate patterns i was sending him all of these cover art ideas i'm like hey can you do something like this and about three or four days later, he sent back the cover art that it is now. He sent it to me, I'm like, what do you think about this? I told him, don't touch it, this is perfect. And that was kind of where it came from and I'm super proud of what he did to kind of encompass the entire project into his art. And I'm super grateful that I had the opportunity to work with him on it. All I wanted to do was tell my story. That was it. I wanted to talk about my mental health progression over the past few months. Everything happening, things getting canceled, being shelled up in my home, not being able to see the people that I love and I care about. And it really did take a toll on me, but I feel like this project was very therapeutic. Uh, 
wanted to make and I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to share it with people. My biggest thing is I also wanted to reach the people who are in the same boat as me. I wanted to let them know that they are not alone when it comes to um, depression and anxiety triggered by these feelings of loneliness. It was made very selfishly, <laughs> as is a lot of my music. In the process, I also want to make sure that the people who do follow me know that I'm in the same boat as a lot of them, and they aren't alone in dealing with these thoughts and these mindsets, and I hope that this music just brings healing and comfort to anybody who listens to it. Kiss your cheek and wave goodbye, hoping it won't be the last time, but you never know with all this tension. Our love used to be colors of red and gold. Hey, yeah. Until you decided to bring in the cold. Our love is as dead as the autumn leaves. Pale and brittle, easily breaking. Carried by the wind.